As I spoke earlier, in Psalm 2, the Bible says, Why do the nations rage against God? Why do people plot a wicked thing against God? I'll tell you why. Because they have agendas of their own. And sometimes they insensitive to what the Lord is telling them. I'm not talking about people outside the church. I'm talking about the people in the church. I was telling yesterday about how the Lord led me to the dangers of secular music, for example, and I've written about it and or backward masking that I found in my own recording before I met Jesus and why I don't listen to any secular music. And yet I find people running around trees singing la la la, sing my music and what music? Thinking it's okay. And finally they get into trouble and they say, where is God? Why hasn't he come through? What is wrong with me? Who is me? If you break the principle, you suffer the consequence of breaking that principle. If you jump out of the building, gravity will affect you unless there's something supernatural that works to overcome the gravity. Planes overtake or overcome that gravity by the force of lift. But that's natural. But this is what I'm saying. My people suffer, Jesus, the Lord says, because they do not know. But here's the thing. People here know and yet they suffer. And why do they go into bondage? Because they ignore the precepts of the God who gave those precepts, thinking they know better than God who created them. Now, when you come to the nations who don't know God, you're supposed to reach out to them. But understand, there is the devil that is in charge of all the nations. And on September 18, 2024, which is last month, all the nations assembled together in a group called the United Nations and the General Assembly of the United Nations demanded that Israel return what was given to them by God to the Palestinians. Why do the nations rage against God? I'm not supporting Israel politically. I'm not against Palestinians or the people there. But I'm talking about the devil who's behind this. And I've spoken about this. And I've taught you about this so that you will not be deceived. I started talking about this more than 12 years ago. I spoke about the fig tree, how the timing of that fig tree is given if the fig tree is Israel. If you want to watch more of that, go to yesterday's Bible study. Was It's all there. Then I spoke about the Vatican and the Pope resigning. Before the world knew about it, the Lord told me about it and I told you about it. It's all all in video. And a couple of months ago, I spoke about the rebuilding of Jerusalem, how Suleiman, a Muslim, a Turk, rebuilt the, Jer <clears throat> the, the, the Temple Mount in the 15th century. How, if you count what the Lord has told us to count, 
it leads us to exactly 2020 that is four years ago when covid started how now there is the acknowledgement by the government of ufos it wasn't there when i thought about it but now governments acknowledge there are things that are flying around that they don't know except that they call it something else and i told you what would happen to the church membership if an alien lands in Durbar Hall ground and says, I come in peace, live long and prosper. How many of you know it's all there in the Bible and this will come to pass? These are not aliens. And I told you that there are two divisions the good guys and the bad guys they're both deceptive and the good guys pretend to give us knowledge we have Arya Vaidya Shala Aryans basically the whole idea be- behind the fourth Reich Hitler pursued the swastika and everything is behind in pursuit of those Aryan race and they will come and when they come they will look like the good guys are you going to be deceived are you going to be able to quote scriptures better than you can because the devil did that but do you know the heart of God Like I said, God is sending this delusion. So you better be right with God. Otherwise, you are going to be deceived. There's nothing I can do about it except tell you that you go going to be deceived. And these warnings might seem like foolishness to you. Just like Jeremiah said, All the prophets will say, get out of that land. You are not supposed to be in bondage. But you are there in that land because you did something against God. And this is a punishment of God. And Jeremiah says, don't listen to these prophets. 70 years must pass. And that's what I spoke about last week. So, Are there people telling you with, of, that you must get out of this? That is right. You must get out of this. But why are you in it in the first place? Is it because you haven't listened to God or you thought you knew better? Or you thought maybe you should compromise to the world and not follow His principles? Has it led you where you are right now? If you find yourself there, God still doesn't condemn you. I would. But God doesn't. And if I am to represent that God who doesn't, I cannot condemn you. Do you understand? I'm telling you from where you are, if you call out to Him, draw near to God and he will what? Run away? He will draw near to you. Amen. So no matter where you are, what you are finding yourself in, if you call out to God, he will show you the path out. But then it's up to you. He'll just show you. When the angel freed Peter, from the prison cell. He told Peter, get up and walk. I'm thinking, God would just have to snap his fingers and Peter would reappear in that living room where 
Rhoda didn't open the door for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you don't understand this, watch this recording. Spend some time. Count the cost. I'm telling you. Don't fall away and you are not going to fall away. Amen? No matter where you are and what you find yourself in, cry out to God. And then I spoke about the Islamic Caliphate that was disbanded before World War I. Now they're trying to repurpose that again. I have a Caliphate, but what's happening is that Shiites cannot unite with Sunnis. That's why you see people against Iran because most of Iranians are Shiites. And some people say that is the iron and clay and what. You need to understand what the Bible speaks about it. And here's what I want to say. Because yesterday I was speaking about the United Nations. Nations united against whom? Against God. Why do those nations rage? I have put it all down in the study of the end times. It's all going to come to pass. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a convergence of all these things. The Vatican is going to be one player, one actor in this scene. The rebuilding of Jerusalem is going to be another actor. The aliens, not your alien, but the aliens, yes, are going to be another bad actor. The aliens are going to be another act. The caliphate are going to play a role. Do you understand the sultans? Everything is there. It's coming together. The Bible calls it the beast. Do you understand? And it rose out of the sea. If you really have wisdom, you will understand what that is. But when it comes to you and me, we face battles every day. Starting from discouragement to reality. I told you that somebody said I was cheap and I told them that I don't use a cheap. I use a hairbrush. Do you understand? That is when my hair was long. So I went to the barber, said trim it and he what did what? Trimmed it and he cut it all off. Good thing I didn't tell him to cut. But this is the only haircut he knows. I can't blame him. He can hardly see. Do you understand? But when it comes down to you and me, That is the reality that we face every day. We can fake it, but nobody is going to fall for it. And after a while, you think that this is all nonsense and you'll go your own way. That's why the Bible tells us over and over and over again in Psalm 51 that the Lord wants truth in our inner being. Or six. And in that truth, wherever you are, whatever you have done, cry out to him and he will save you. In 1 John 5, 19, it says, We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We know we are of God. We know that the wicked one is in charge of the world. We know that. If we know that, then why are we supporting him, the wicked one? And expect God to come through onto that. You come out of that. 
the prodigal child went home the son went home do you understand you come home you cry to god draw near to god and he will draw near to you last week i thought about what the lord expects while we are in captivity here's the thing do you find yourself in trouble and i explained how david found himself in trouble and you find that his own men wanted to kill him why because they thought they were doing things for god i'm putting in my words and what happened in the end their wives their children all got taken prisoner and so they wanted to blame it on david and they wanted to kill him so what did david do he strengthened himself in the lord you'll find it in samuel chapter 30 verse 6 but he did something and this is what i want you to understand i spoke about last week first thing he did is that he strengthened himself in the lord he found faith and with that faith he applied that faith and he saw okay god no matter what i know you are there why are you downcast on my soul why are you disquiet within me no matter what i know you are there and therefore what did he do he strengthened himself in that lord his god and then after he strengthened himself the peace of god that surpasses all understanding yeah in philippians 4:4 to 7 and then after he strengthened he sought god we do it exactly the opposite thing we see god to find strength when he say he is given you everything you need to strengthen yourself he's jesus said on the cross it is finished what do we do instead we sit idly and we think god is going to do something and if he doesn't do anything he is responsible he's a bad guy david strengthened himself in the lord and then he sought the lord in that faith without faith it is impossible to please god and then what did god say go oh, get them if he got his wives his children everything back and more than that he got the plunder from his enemies and he got wealth nothing was harmed where are you and then he called that place palparasam that is in 1 chronicles 14:10 to 11 says then david inquired of god after strengthening shall i go up against the philistines we you deliver them into my hands and the lord said to him go up for i will deliver them into your hands so they went up to baal parasim and david defeated them there and then david said god has broken through my enemies by my hand like a brick through of water therefore they called the name of that place baal parasim here god has broken through david said god has broken through who's broken through god yes my enemies whatever your enemies are now in the new covenant who are your enemies flesh and blood or the spiritual forces spiritual forces yes i am not your enemy hallelujah yeah, you can look at me and smile yes hallelujah god has broken through my enemies by my hand David's hand. David wasn't the old covenant or the new covenant. 
old covenant in the new covenant the hand becomes mouth and to mouth is yes? hallelujah i'm using my words what do you do you speak against your enemies life and death are in the power of your tongue do you understand and first and foremost you strengthen yourself in the lord and then instead of seeking god who are you the temple of huh the holy spirit and with that empowerment you speak and the word of god does not return to him void you're speaking the word of god hallelujah do you see your authority do you understand in zero crying in the devame you'll say yes you called what did you say he can't do anything because he has already given you if i give for example this mouse to steve and steve keeps begging me for the mouse what can i do it's already in your hand yes you clear so that is why i'm telling you whatever the devil has stolen get it back i remember a time i'm sure you do too we went to uti and we got robbed yes a thief broke in and stole our money and our watches i had an omega that was the only thing that was left from my father when i came home to cochin after that i was thinking what to do about it because this is stolen the lord told me get it back So I remember this clearly I sat in the living room and I prayed it through and I spoke and I said that watch let it appear let it be found and I got up because the phone was ringing and it was Peter Chetan saying this watch has been found miraculously it was according to him in all places laid on top of the pillow it could not have been because they search the pillow i search the pillow and the bed had been made and the watch it was found what has the devil stolen from you get it back so i said you keep that watch when i come again next week i'll get it do you understand How did I get that faith? Because I sat with the Lord and the Lord told me to pray. I didn't cry, cry out to God and say, and the day you were me. I did something about it. Hallelujah. The nations may rage against you, but do something about it. You have been given that authority. Amen. Walk in that. And if you walk in that authority then you can be blessing to others there are times when i don't walk in that authority and if you are walking in authority you can help me because iron sharpens iron do you understand what i'm saying yes i'm no different from you or the most part i'm as human as you are yes I'm joking. I am as human as you are. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Yesterday I called someone to another number that I that they don't have. I said, "Who is this?" I said, "This is God speaking." I said, "What?" I said, "Don't be so stiff-necked. This is God speaking." <laughs> And I said, "This is your pastor." I think that little person learned to breathe yeah, after that. Yeah? 
But what I'm saying is that all this is pointless without the Holy Spirit in your life. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who led me to pray, for example, for that watch back. In the nations might rage, but we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to have hope. And without our hope, we'll just cry out to God and nothing will happen. Do you understand? But here's the thing. In our unfaithfulness, God remains faithful. If you cry out to God, maybe He'll come through for you. But then, like I said last week, just because He comes through for you doesn't mean that is the formula. You have been given authority. The formula is written down in the Bible. You have been given authority. Life and death are in the power of tongue. A confession of your faith. Hallelujah. I have given you the daily declaration of faith. Confession of your faith. Do you understand? What are you going to do about it? Do you understand? Yes? By my hand, I will get this breakthrough. Repeat after me. By my hand, I will get through and I will get this breakthrough. Hallelujah. What must we do? We should pray for boldness. Because why pray? This boldness is not human courage. It is given by God. Let's go to Acts 4, 13. It says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. So, being with Jesus will give you what? Boldness. That is when Jesus walked the earth, yes? Now, he's gone to heaven and he's given us the Holy Spirit. Amen? Go to Acts 4, 29 to 31. And here the disciples praying. And there's more to this prayer than we see I, because it, in a way, it is a model for us to pray. But here, I just want to read what the Bible says. Now, Lord, I'm reading from verse 29. Look upon their threats. Why do the nations rage? Look upon their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. So, you require boldness to speak the word. I require boldness. I don't know about you. Without that boldness, I wouldn't compromise with the world. Amen? With that boldness, hallelujah. Watch out. I tell the devil, you lay down because you're dead. Hallelujah. That's a boldness. And I keep telling you that when I was in the ICU, I had a visitor. That was the devil. I said to him, you can't touch me. Do you understand? I heard the prayer of saints. I heard people praying in tongues. I saw all that. That gave me boldness. I would be lying if I would say that I wasn't frightened. Initially, there was some fear. There was something happening. And I saw him. I said, you can't touch me. But then he attacked me in different ways. I thought that I see was on fire. And I told Anu, to get me out. Do you want to say? And the doctors were saying, it was not on fire. I said, you keep quiet. Did you, do you understand? Yes? 
I thought some, some not the, where I was sitting, some other area was caught on fire and there was smoke all over the place. I could see the smoke. But they're saying there was no, no such thing. But I could see it. Do you, do you understand? Yes. No matter what, he, is, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you understand? So, says, with all boldness they may speak your word. Yes? That we may speak your word. Verse 30, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place that they were assembled together were shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. So, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke the word of God with boldness. They didn't care if people were out to kill them. Do you understand? That is boldness. You have that boldness. If you don't have that, then pray. God will give you that boldness. Amen? In that way, it doesn't matter how much courage you have. Because that is your human nature. In 2 Timothy 1.7 it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. That spirit is the Holy Spirit. Yes? Do you understand? When that spirit works in the human spirit, then it becomes of power, of love and of sound mind. But it is your spirit that does this. The Holy Spirit only leads that way. You have to choose to follow Him. Amen? And if you choose fear or faith, then I'm sorry to say that you have no part in heaven. I'll say that again. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is not just being a chicken or doing anything. No, you got to stand forth. Why am I so bold in saying this? Because it says that in Revelation 21 verse 8. It says what? But the cowardly. Who are the cowardly? People in fear who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. We're walking maybe in fakery bakery, as I say. Do you understand? But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, all liars. Who's the father of lies? The devil. That's why you should not lie. Don't expect the power of God if your tongue lies. James says, how can fresh water and polluted waterfall flow from the same spring? Do you understand? Like I said, check your heart. Why are you where you are? I wrote a song. With every step I make, I dig a deeper hole. My life was like that, but God rescued me from that. Amen. All life shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, stop being cowardly. You will not be cowardly if you were with Jesus. You are cowardly because you have not been with Jesus. You are cowardly because you have a spirit of fear, not the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, 
they were they were filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the god word of god with boldness hallelujah do you understand yes there's more but there's no point in going through all these scriptures and I, maybe i'll speak about that later but the lord is coming and he's coming soon we go to daniel 11:32 says those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery that is the antichrist he'll corrupt you with flattery oh you're doing great things for god but you don't know your covenant but it says but the people who know their god shall be strong and carry out great exploits hallelujah we know our god amen don't condemn yourself if you hear this message pray for boldness you lack boldness i have to pray for boldness you want to, it's not a thing that 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 is there always filled to the brim no i leak and i have to ask god give me boldness to speak your word in season and out of season give me boldness to say the truth in love though i may not want to speak that truth do you understand and maybe you don't need that boldness but then if you're cowardly because you don't have that boldness ask god pray for boldness amen amen let's worship him some more hallelujah i want to remind you But this message is not to condemn you but whatever you break through is it is in the hand of the lord and it is time for that breakthrough in psalm 94 verse 10 it says who he who instructs the nations shall he not correct he who teaches man knowledge the lord knows the thoughts of man that they are futile so the nations may rage things may rage in your heart but verse 12 says blessed is the man who whom you instruct o lord and teach out of your law that you may give him rest from the days of adversaries until the pit is dug for the wicked for the lord will not cast off his people nor will he forsake his inheritance but judgment will return to righteousness and the upright in heart will follow it even though you may not see any fruit of you being righteous or the righteousness of god judgment will return to righteousness and you will see it in verse 16 it says who will rise up for me against the evil doers who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity unless the lord has be, had been my help my soul would soon have settled in silence if i say my foot lifts, slips your mercy o lord will hold me up in the multitude of my anxieties within me your comforts delight my soul who is our comforter the holy spirit but the lord is asking who will stand up for me are you not the representative of christ are you not the ambassador of christ then stand up for him pray for boldness 
In Psalm 96, verse 10 onwards to 13, it says, Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is also firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the seas roar and its fullness. Verse 13 says, For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Jesus is coming. So if you are not bold, pray for boldness. Proclaim to the world the Lord reigns. They might count you as foolish, but it doesn't matter. If you don't have that boldness, as they say in Malayalam, that thunderum. Get a spinal column for yourself. Pray for boldness. Grow a spine. As my pastor used to say, Christiani Anikal Nataluanam. Hallelujah. We are not of those who shirk back. Hallelujah. There is no place for the wicked. Hallelujah. There is no rest for the wicked. Don't count yourself among the wicked. You are not. Amen. So as we sing this song again, count him worthy. In spite of your failures, in spite of your weakness, in spite of who you are, he's worthy. He's faithful. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Worthy is his name. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 1 27 it says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. So if you find yourself without strength. If you find yourself foolish according to the world, if you find yourself weak, pray. Pray to God for boldness. Don't look to yourself. But look unto Jesus. And that's where the Holy Spirit will help you. Don't go according to the world. For it says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their own craftiness. I have learned not to think of myself as being wise. I have learned that the wisdom of God is better than any wisdom that I can conjure. Up. 
and though i may have struggles though nations may rage against me and though people may plot of wicked things i finally have no one else but the lord to turn to and trust him i hand over my cares and my burdens to him and he sustains me he helps me walk worthy of my calling in him and he gives me the boldness i need to speak the word and when i find that i'm influenced by people or the world i go to god i go to god and he strengthens me in his word and he gives me that choice to choose life or death that is how i see things if i go with the world or if i please men i'm choosing death but i as i go with god and i say walk with him though it may be difficult though it may be lonesome it is a walk of life hallelujah and i bless you with that walk the walk of life Amen. And I bless you that the Lord will restore that walk of life. That you walk with him continually in all areas. I am now bless you in Jesus name. And I bless you that you may be a blessing. In Jesus name. And the church said, Amen. And the love of the Father and the fellowship of his son and the sweet companionship of the holy spirit be with us as we go forward as we go forth in peace to seek and to save them who are lost in jesus name amen and amen go in peace